Hello, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com again with part three of the Mandelbulb 3D tutorial. And this time I'm going to talk to you about the color options. I've been a little bit afraid or reluctant to do this part because, frankly, how these colors work is still a mystery to me. I mean, I can use the color options and uh, get some great looking images and, uh, you know, have a lot of control over the colors, but I don't understand it well enough to tell you the why and the wherefore of, uh, you know, what why a certain color is going to end up where it is on the fractal. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you what I have discovered and hopefully it'll give you a good boost, a boost booster start on your own explorations. Uh, I'm going to skip the lighting controls for now. We'll talk about that next time. Uh, but here we have the object colors tab, the ambient tab, and the background pick. The ambient is controlling, say, like the background. This depth option is the background color. If we wanted to fade it from a white to a, a dark blue, we just choose white for one and the blue. That's more of a purple. We want blue. And this is the intensity of the background color. Excuse me, it'll um, interact with the fog, the ambient light, and the background picture if you have one. On the background picture, if you want to load an image, just click this, use an image for the background. Load up an image. And you can apply it as a full frame, just still image, which works great if you're just rendering a still frame. But if you're doing an animation, you'll probably want or you might want the background to move around you know like it was in outer space or like a sky scene or whatever in that case you click the as full background sphere and M3D will wrap that image around a sphere and place your fractal in the middle of it so when you move your camera around it'll look uh, it'll act realistically with the rest now uh, you might want to do a little prep on your image to because it's going to be wrapped around a sphere. Uh, if you imagine like wrapping a basketball with a square piece of wrapping paper, and when you the middle might look fine, but when you get to the edges, it'll be all scrunched up and overlapping. Um, this scale rose to geographic projection can help with that distortion, but there's also some tricks you can do in Photoshop ahead of time to uh, make it look real smooth on the poles and make it look more seamless and there's actually a, a nice a succinct tutorial on how to do that on the fractalforums.com and I'll find that and put the link on the YouTube page over back on the ambient tab this option the AMB is the ambient light in the scene and that is basically a soft, even light that's being projected from the camera. So it goes straight onto your object. And you can see now this is a totally gray object. And this is just the ambient light and these other two lights shining on it. Uh, but you can see how it colors the object. And this is the intensity of the light being cast. The ambient light setting, this is a great way to add some subtle shading to the lighting and the colors on your object. I'm really glad there's two options for the colors. I'm going to take those back to a more neutral color so they don't interfere with the rest of this. Okay, the fog, I am just not even going to get into that really because I haven't used it a lot and I don't understand it enough to tell you about it but this is the intensity of the fog and actually if you go this way it'll eventually turn all white this way it kind of subtracts the fog and almost like a negative fog if you go to the left and of course you can change the colors these offset sliders have to do with where the fog would start in relation to your camera and how intense it gets as it goes back in relation to the camera unless this is checked which then it's all relative to the object you're looking at and these have to do with how the fog colors fall off between foreground and background but um, I'll leave that for later when I understand it better I've already mentioned ambient shadows a couple times I think but they're uh, pretty important 
to the way I like my fractals to look. And this is a nice option here, the second reflection. What it does is kind of throw some color back into those ambient shadows as if it was being reflected off the surfaces back into those crevices. So you can use that to restore some detail that might have gotten lost by using the ambient shadows. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. This is like my sixth try on this <laughs> tutorial. All right, here is uh, these buttons are preset lighting. If you find a lighting setup that you like, you can hit this lighting and colors. You can hit the M, click a square, and it'll save that light. And then you can click it again to reapply those settings to the current fractal. Uh, keep in mind, though, that say I save this fractal, this color scheme here, and and saved it. If and I'm a, I, just because this is pink on the outside edges here and all dark gray in the middle doesn't mean that that's necessarily going to happen when I apply this color scheme to a different fractal. That, that uh, they kind of have a mind of their own uh, and as to how this range of colors maps onto the fractal. So, but they are a great starting point. I've got quite a few saved that I like combinations of colors, and then I can move those colors around in the range to get the effects that I want. You notice this one is shiny too and that is over here on the object tab. That's the specularity slider, specular reflection and that shows how shiny, how much light is going to be reflected and use these specular colors there. For every fractal there's kind of two ranges of colors. There's the specular color up here on top and the diffuse color, the color of the object, is along the bottom. I'll go back to a grayscale here so I can kind of try to explain these colors sliders. So what you got here is basically a complex range of gradient colors. So it's going to fade from this color to this color to this color. and you have control over how where the colors fall in this range but you don't have control over where this red is going to hit or where this section of the gradient is going to hit that is controlled by the math formulas and however they map that onto the fractal but you can find the part that you want to work on what i usually do is start out with the all gray and let's say i wanted to make these ridges red and the darker and the inside areas black I could probably manage that or darker color so what I do what I would do is get a red color I usually uncheck this glue sliders that causes all the sliders to move as if they're attached by a rubber band or something if you uncheck that then you can move one independently it gives you a lot finer control so it looks like those ridges are corresponding to the gradient in this area here. I so what I might do then is get another red color, maybe the same color. If I wanted the exact same color, I could hold my mouse over that color and hit C to copy the color. You can see down here there's a few instructions on cutting and pasting colors. So I right, you right click on these to change the color too. I don't think I mentioned that yet. And I might do the same thing on the other side. Just so I could kind of tell where these colors are going to start and finish on my fractal. You see as I move this to the left more of that image is going to be red, reddish orange. And also notice that because this one, gray one is far away now, that it doesn't change as much because remember it's always doing a gradient between the gray and the red. If you want a tight band of colors then you need to block it off with another color or 
in this case I'm going to put this gray color right up against it <clears throat> and now let's say let's see what happens let's put another color in here a yellow see if we can't find something interesting that gets highlighted now another thing that's going to affect these colors is over here is these two sliders <clears throat> I'm going to save this one just in case <laughs> always save you can also save your lighting and color options separately with this uh, down here the floppy disk icon we need a new icon <laughs> who's uses floppies anymore uh, anyway <laughs> every time you see a save it's still the floppy disk um, this slider right this is the way I kind of think about it in my head this may be totally wrong as how it actually works but this is the best I can think to describe it this slider right here corresponds to the left side of this color range this side this slider right here corresponds to the right side of this color range These, this, this strip in here is like a histogram of how the colors gradient is going to lay out on this fractal. And the darker it is, the more pixels in the image are going to be taking that color. So, um, you can see there's more dark here. So, there's going to be more action in your colors right over here than there is on this faded tail over here and if I move this slider that also affects where the colors are going to start and stop on the image generally I kind of slide these up against the end and the beginning of this histogram And then I start moving these around to see what what color is going to match up where. And I like to start with the gray and some strong colors just because it's a lot easier to see what your colors are going to, you know, what your colors are affecting, what areas they're affecting. I think I'll stop right there. I think I explained that as the best explanation I've given so far today. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, so get in there and just tinker with this stuff. That's the only way to figure out these colors. I think after you start playing with it a bit, you'll start to get a feel for it. Uh, that's the only way it worked for me. Um, also, the specular colors, you can change those in this same window here just by clicking this top color. And that'll be the color of the reflection at that point that gets controlled by this specular color here so that's another way even if you're not using it for a shine effect to add in some variation in the colors I like to add subtle shadings and grades of color into a computer generated artwork it, it takes out some of that plasticky feeling sometimes um, All right, let's see what have I forgot to mention. These options, color cycling and color on second choice, uh, they change the way the colors are laid out on your fractal. That's the best I can say for those right now. Just try them and see what happens. <laughs> they just change how the colors are going to be, a, what order the colors are laid out, I guess, is a good description for it. I don't know. Uh, color variation on Z. I believe that it kind of controls how often the, this range of gradients is going to be repeated as it's applied to the object a higher number and you'll get changes in your colors more often as it progresses through the shape. And I mentioned saving the presets. I mentioned the gamma is just the overall brightness of the scene. 
um, which might come in handy. I've found it useful when I do some extreme settings with the fog. Sometimes or extreme colors, I need to uh, brighten some things up or make it darker. Okay, uh, I think I think I covered everything that I can successfully communicate to you. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot for listening. I, I hope that wasn't too rambling. I hope that gives you a good jump start on your explorations and just get in there and monkey with this stuff. Just uh, play around with it and uh, grab a slider see what happens. You know, you're not going to break anything. <laughs> just remember to save a lot if you're um, working on something that you want to keep. And please leave some feedback if uh, there's anything in specific you'd like me to cover. If you're watching these videos, I'm still making them. So um, let me know what you want to hear about, and I'll do my best to uh, share that information with you. So uh, have fun exploring, and I will see you next time. Bye.